Okay, so this is a digital sculpt se session. I'm not really going to worry about explaining every little step. I'm just going to basically be working and let the uh, let the steps kind of be just example of workflow. Did that make any sense? No. Okay, who cares? Uh, so anyway, um, whenever I pick a brush, and start using it, it starts popping up up here uh, into the top of my brush tab that you just saw I selected from. And I'm using my damn standard just to define this area better. I'm going to um, go ahead and uh, let's see, change my lasso, my mask lasso. So I can mask out this area, and then if I control and click outside, it'll invert the mask. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use actually an inflate brush. Uh, let's see here. If I hit I on my keyboard, it'll be easier to find. And I'm just going to inflate this just a bit. Actually, you know what? So better than that is just use the deformation inflate. Um, I'm going to use the balloon inflate, just kind of balloon it up a little bit. There's the bit. Like, no, did it even do it? Yeah, I'll dial it in. There we go. <clears throat> that looks alright. And then I'm going to use my move tool to just adjust this a little bit. And maybe move that out. And maybe move some stuff like that in. side that in let's clear the mask and now I'm gonna just smooth this a little bit here just a tiny bit and it's not perfect but I'll just move on and fix it when I get retopologizing in, in uh, Maya go a little bit further with this. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And then overall I want the shape to be a little bit more like that. And I'm just going to smooth it a little bit. So sometimes you can make it a little bit bigger and then anticipate that you're going to smooth. So then you know it'll reduce in size when you start smoothing. Um, so if I hit BDS, that will that sequence of keys will pick my damn standard again. So instead of going to the brush thing every time, sometimes I just I'll just do that. I'll hit BDS, and I'm getting a little stretchy in the polygons here. Uh, so this might be a time where you know, perhaps I'll go into my, uh, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Go into my geometry and I have Dynamesh, so it's not even on anymore. So I just turned it back on and, and if you didn't notice, um, wow, my polyframe's gone for some reason. Uh, well, anyway, it remeshed, um, my object. But the problem with remeshing it a lot is that, if, especially if you get into fine detail, you start sometimes losing some of that fine detail when you remesh. Uh, but I'm going to leave it on for right now. I think this is a good level for this. Let's just go back to the standard brush. And um, I'm going to work out these shoulders a little bit. Um, a general rule for ZBrush is you actually don't want to up res until you really need it. So technically, I probably, if I was doing this from scratch in ZBrush instead of starting in Maya, I probably would have not up resed to this level yet. Um, I probably would have waited. Let's turn my smooth intensity up. And uh, so, so it's just like sketching where you know you get your general shape first before you move on. 
Now I'm going to turn off my lazy mouse because this is annoying me. Um, I just want my stroke to kind of be a direct stroke without any any uh, delay. Um, let me just show you what lazy mouse does really quick. If you turn it up, like lazy smooth, lazy radius, watch what happens here. So oh, let's turn up the intensity and let's make this smaller. So you can see it does a nice like smooth stroke which is really good for a lot of things but I don't like it when I'm doing just my general uh, my general stuff so I just turn it off my general shaping I don't want it on and let's turn this down so even though um, this is a dog uh, you know it is an anthropomorphic so uh, anthropomorphic that is and so you know I am thinking a little bit of like how does the muscles tie together in a human and so um, not to overthink anything uh, but you know sometimes you want to make sure that you have forms that that uh, make sense in in the uh, the way they're connected uh, to other forms so looking at some anatomy is not a bad idea if you're unfamiliar with it um, so my forearms are kind of a little bit big uh, and it's kind of got like a a little bit of a Popeye feel to it right now, which I'm actually kind of okay with. Let me just smooth it out a little bit. I remember whatever I'm doing over here is going to be happening over here. Let's do this. I still feel like I, I don't like this chest area enough. There we go. That's a little bit better. Let's see how it looks from here now. This area, the upper trapezius muscles, just define those a little bit. I don't like how these hips are sticking off of here so much. Um, I can actually let's mask this. that and then if I if I hold control and click on the mesh it will blur the mask uh, all the masking uh, functions are in here too so there's a masking rollout that you can look at um, but if I want to I can go ahead and uh, this is gonna get a little weird I'm using the move tool here let's see move tool this is a new move tool actually um, hmm. let's turn that off. Okay, yeah, here's the old one. This is the transpose tool. That's what I was thinking I was getting. I just wanted to pull this in a little bit. Or, what you can do with transpose is you can, you can draw it out like this. And you can see what you can do. It's kind of weird. Um, it's really more in this crotch area that I'm not... I'm not happy with things. Let me clear the mask, turn the, turn the draw back on, and maybe go to my move brush. Uh, do the wrong one. I think I just want the crotch to be a little bit closer, like that. And then out here, the hips are a little bit disjointed looking to me. I want them to kind of conform. It's because I made it with just cylinders, so it's it just looks a little bit funny. And then the butt, like I want the butt to kind of be rounded like that. So I just want to smooth this out. Let's turn up my smooth intensity. Smooth that a little bit. Smooth that, and then just pull this butt out a little bit like so. Maybe bulge it a little bit.
smooth. You can see it's just a lot of back and forth. So the the reason why, so at this point here, I'm actually I'm kind of fighting the mesh a little bit because it's it's a dense mesh, and you really when you're in these shaping stages, you don't actually want to have your mesh too dense because it becomes hard to uh, it just becomes hard to manipulate um, like large movements, and you start getting weird like like you can tell like this thing is kind of you know getting shape to it that I I don't know I don't like it like I can tell there's sort of like some pinching going on so I'm gonna take a uh, travel over to here and let's just try that where it's at I'm gonna see how 30,000 polygons we're lowering it from 130 5,000 so it anywhere closer to 30,000 is going to be a lot less geometry to deal with and for some reason I still don't have my my polyframes not showing up I'm not sure what's going on there but now that this is less um, geo it's now what 59,000 so it didn't really hit my target that I was going for but it's better but now that it's less geo I can work with this a little bit better uh, let's go to my damn standard. Oops, wrong one. Um, where is it? There we go. And so I'm just going to kind of define some of these areas here um, a little bit. Give them a little butt. You know, maybe just smooth it out a little bit afterwards. Uh, let's see here. Too much smooth there. Let's make it smaller. Let's make my smooth intensity a little bit less. Just smooth that out. Alright. Let's see here. So, this damn standard would be good to, you know, do stuff like just lightly define these areas here. Let's see. Um, down here. Smooth that out. Maybe go back to my move brush. Make these kneecaps. So just hold Alt and pull the kneecaps out a little bit. Maybe a little bit smaller. Maybe smooth into that. Make it a little bit bigger. Smooth into that. This might be somewhere where I'm going to actually mess with my focal shift. Oops, forgot. Get back to my damn standard. And I'm just defining a little bit of these these crevices. Oops. Alright, and ZBrush has a really good um, history to it, so I'll just show you this. You can grab this little bar up here and you can just drag it. Look at all this. And it just like it, it really works well. It's like amazing how well that works to like go back and see where was I? Do I like where I'm at now? You know, so you can basically I think it saves up to I wanna say it's like over a thousand steps. It might even be like three thousand steps. I forgot what it was. It saves a lot of steps. So so you can you can do a whole bunch of work and say, you know what, I liked it better before and just back it off and go back to where you were before. It's pretty cool. You know, so here I'm just trying to define these these crevices. This is kind of nitty gritty stuff. Maybe I should be I should probably be more concerned with the general shape at this point. Um, but I just saw that, so I figured I'd get in there and mess around. I haven't even really touched the the face and the mouth that much yet, which is definitely kind of like one of my main focuses that I want to get to today. So I'm just going to do that, find that a little bit. Now when I retopologize, I'll actually make a cavity for the mouth. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to kind of leave it like that. Let me undo that. Let's just do this with a move. Let's just kind of Make that a little bit bigger so we get like that that fold. And then nasal label fold that comes over the 
goes over the corner. Definitely in dogs, they have they have some like skin there. You get this chin coming out a little bit. Typically, I'd have my um, I'd have my my reference in here. Um, the ZBrush actually has this cool thing called see through, so I can go ahead and just do that. Um, so if I wanted to, I can go to my actually find my reference and uh, let's see just find that reference I'm not even sure if I have it in here yeah yeah that's good <laughs> as if I knew where it was um, hmm probably in my art files I'm not, I don't even remember where I put it now. I'd have to go into Maya and look at the path, but uh, pretty sure it's probably in here. Somewhere. There it is. Okay. So I can have this out. Go back to ZBrush. And I can go see through. And I can actually, while I'm still working on this, I can just kind of go like this and say, yeah, is that hitting it? I don't know. Let's look at it in perspective. Usually I, I sculpt in perspective anyway, so. It's not perfect, but, you know, I deviate a little bit sometimes. Um, I'm okay with the way this, this looks right now. Alright, so just turn off see through. Just keep working. Now this might be an area where, so I'm getting a little bit of the bottom part and I don't want it. Let me turn my perspective off. I'm going to mask this bottom part off. Maybe mask it a little bit more, like so. And then now, as I work in the top part, why is it still masking? Oh, because I'm hitting control. Why am I hitting control? I'm going to hit alt. That was me. So now if I want to like bulge that out but not affect the bottom, I can definitely do that. Smooth it out a little bit. And I can decide do I want, you know, like a little, uh, maybe I want like a little bit of crease here. The dog. And then I can come back and say, nope, don't like that. Just undo it. Because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Alright. Um, Alright, so to inverse the mask, just control click outside. And I can sit here and now smooth this guy out a little bit. Make adjustments here. Looks a lot better. Now that it's smooth, still have my damn standard brush out. Maybe get in here and just refine this crease a little bit better. So, and I'm kind of thinking I want him to have like this perpetual smile. Um, so I'm thinking about like actually kind of working that into his default pose in the mesh, just that he's kind of smiley no matter what. Um, the ears are not exactly how I want them. Look at the ears right now. So, like, really, I want the ears to be more like that. So, like I said, this is the move tool is a good friend. Um, so watch this. We just mask this off like so. Inverse it, and then we come into here and just kind of yank this up like that. Because I'm retopologizing it anyway. Um, so you can unmask. Uh, by holding, you hold control and alt together, and so you can basically, it, it does the, it's like an inversing the mask, if you will. So, let's do this, let's smooth that a little bit, and, so, 
Move that a little bit right there. Oops, okay, so if you want to go back to your mask brush, you just hold control, click on here, and we're going to go back to uh, mask pen, I believe it's what it is, yeah. So now it'll, like, basically paint. So I can just go in here and paint the area that I want masked or not masked. Let's see here. Looks like I missed an area here. Let's unmask this, so control and all, and just kind of unmask the, the area. I can inverse this. So if I want to, oops, let's just put this aside here. Actually, it's looking pretty good now. It's pretty close to where I want. So, from the back though, I'm not really digging it. I actually, like, I almost feel like the ears are in the wrong place in the back. Um, do that. I feel like, <clears throat> I'm going to turn my transpose on. So, I feel like the ears should be, let's do a rotate. This is a tool I do not want to explain right now, but because it, it it can be a little bit complicated. But if you go on ZBrush Central, um, you can you can see how it works. They'll, they have all kinds of examples. Okay, so let's try this. Let me just see what happens if I move this around a little bit. No, I'm okay with. Let's see if I can do a rotate. Yeah, that might be okay. Alright, so let's go back to draw. I'm smoothing this out a little bit. I'm not super concerned about any artifacts um, because I can fix those in Maya. But I do want to get it. You want to get it as close as you can uh, here. I mean, if, if this was like, if I wasn't doing this demo coming up in Maya, of me retopologizing this, I would definitely be, um, I would definitely spend a lot, a lot of time on making sure this part was right. Like, I wouldn't want to even retopologize this until this part was right. I'm just using my damn standard to, like, define where this air starts. I'm going to smooth it a little bit. There we go. Alright, so, it's looking okay. Now let's work on this face a little bit, because this thing does need some love here. Let's just smooth that out a little bit. I, you can see where the eyes were. Um, for the eyes, like, typically the eyes are going to be like separate objects anyway. Um, I just put them in there as like more of a defined area. But what, I'm, what I would do is that there's going to basically be like a separation. Um, that's like maybe where the eyelids would come together. And then I'm going to mask this area here. And I'll inverse it. And then I can just... Let's see here. Let's see if I can just uh, use my move tool. And then hold alt. And I can just kind of bulge this out a little bit like so. Um, this is an area that's going to be you know, definitely gonna get more defined when I re apologize. So I'm just smooth it a little tiny bit. I think it smooth a little too heavy. Oops. So shift. And I'll just touch it a little bit with the smooth. Like that. So imagine he's got his eyes closed. That's basically and then so the other thing is too is that I definitely wanna define an eyebrow. Um, because there's so much personality comes through uh, eyebrow movement. Now I'm using my my um, move brush. I'm gonna smooth it a little bit, but then I probably just want to use a standard brush on this. Just come into here and start sculpting. I 
think about the cavity, let's go in the eye. I mean, so this is where anatomy and physiology, even if you're doing cartoony stuff, anatomy and physiology is a huge thing because you want to understand why, you know, if you understand the bone structure, you know, then you'll understand why uh, certain things look the way they do. And then what happens is, is you translate that into your work and then your work becomes more believable. Um, and that it's really about believability more than it is about reality. So, I mean, if you're doing stuff that's a little bit more uh, cartoony or sci-fi or something like that, or monsters or whatever, like you're you're thinking more like, okay, I want this to be believable, you know. And if you understand like the bone structures and stuff, it's going to make more sense, you know, where you where you actually start putting your sculpts, your sculpting uh, forms and stuff like that will make more sense. I mean, there's always exceptions for the rule, of course, you know, there's always stuff that goes off the beaten path, but that doesn't mean that that's, that's the exception, that's not the rule. So we're getting closer. Um, I don't like the form of the skull, honestly. Mm, tail looks bad, too. We can mess with that later. Tail's the easy part, because I, that's something I would basically just do in, uh, in the retop. I wouldn't worry about it so much here. I kind of want the skull to... Um, this air is... The air is kind of... I didn't have the airs done too well. Let's just put it that way. Um, probably should have taken a little bit more time in the beginning to get the airs formed right. I think at this point it's something I'm just going to have to adjust later when I get the, the finished model. Ooh. And I don't, I thought I fixed this. Maybe I did not. I don't like the form of the skull. Let me, uh, so I'm going to isolate this. Let's put it on perspective too at this point. Yeah, definitely. Let me isolate this. Like that. And then now, oops, let's also isolate down here. Okay, so, just kind of polish this out a little bit, and I might want to isolate the ears too, so back to the lasso, lasso allows me some latitude like that. Okay, now I'm going to just blur the mask a little bit. Move tool. I don't like how square this is in the back, so that's, that's, I want this to actually be kind of rounded. Like so. And this, this is where the skull starts to like taper, and then it should connect to the neck. So, going to take some love here. And my smooth is like super low right now, so let's turn that up. So I started using ZBrush in when I was, uh, geez, it was I was in my undergrad, probably about 2004 or something like that, and uh, it was ZBrush 2 at the time. So, needless to say, um, I've been using it for a while. So, and there's you know there's honestly there's people that use it like all the time more than I do. And they probably know the tools and have so many hotkeys set up that I don't even have set up. But uh, the the thing I'm trying to get at is that you know once you start figuring it out and and you've used it for a while, um, it it does actually. <laughs> people complain about the interface, and and after a while though, I actually started to really enjoy a lot of the stuff they did. What I don't like is I don't like how you have to flip through the panels over here. Uh, I don't 
believe you can even break these off onto another monitor. So that's that would be the area I would complain about. But some of the other stuff, um, I, I have no problem with. Like they they actually set up some stuff in here that's very intuitive um, to the workflow. So uh, it, it but it does take practice. I mean, there's no doubt you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get into this thing and just you know practice, watch a lot of tutorials, you know. And I definitely suggest like watching tutorials because that's that's how I started. If I if I had tried to start like reading a book or something to like figure out the interface or just like figure out the interface on my own, um, I would have probably been uh, it would have been hard. Uh, but I it was way back, like I said a long time ago. I actually bought some Noman DVDs on using ZBrush, and so there was like these guys that were from Hollywood and they had been using it in production so they were you know they're really good at their stuff and and uh, they knew they knew some good workflows and stuff like that so um, that is that was how I learned you know uh, let's see His fingers so the fingers are an interesting area, so like I've got my lasso mask on here. Just gonna oops, invert that. Maybe mask this a little bit more. Like so. Maybe like that. And then so if you want, you know, like this this is why I said this move tool is like just so valuable. You just move this thing like this and then you know, if you need to define the fingers a little bit more. Uh, clear that mask out, and then here you just get in tight here and smooth it a little bit, something like that. And then, of course, we'll retopologize this, but I just want to get it so it's close enough to what I want. Um, and then I would do the same thing here. Like so, invert. Okay, uh, so the damn standard, if you want to define like the hand a little bit, like you know, you got this. Now let's do this first. Let's get this uh, palm kind of has this thing going on there. Now, of course, this is a puppy, so we could we could go a different direction with this and go more of. Uh, the, the puppy paw direction, which actually now that I think about it is probably probably smarter. Something more like this. Maybe maybe bring this up all the way into here. There's kind of like a logical crease between the fingers. And then you can you could do something kind of like that to find like just the shapes in there. I'm not going to get, it's, this isn't that high poly of a mesh, so I'm not going to get too crazy with, with this. Um, so another way that, so I was just looking at this and, and thinking about it, and another way you could do this is you could, you could literally just mask this, the shape that you want. Let's say like that. Okay. Um, maybe a little bit more. Now you have to understand the mask is actually masking through. So we're getting it back there too. So I have to unmask this. There we go. And then I can invert this mask. And a couple things I could do. I could just take a standard brush and I can just start, you know, kind of ballooning this thing up, smooth it out a little bit, type of thing. You know, so we get now it's just popping up instead of just putting a divot with the with the damn standard. You're actually getting the form popping out. Um, or uh, another trick is in this deformation tab that we have that inflate. You can just drag this out a little bit like that and just and then smooth it a little bit. So that might be one way to approach this. There's so many different, you know, they, everyone's going to have different techniques. Um, and that's that's great because that that's like the diversity that you know, like, oh, neat, you use that, I use this type of thing. You can go like this and maybe say that 
you know, define these areas as being like the pads on the paws. Right, let's do one here. Like so. I wonder if the, the audio is picking up all the birds outside. I have all these birds that are in my backyard <laughs> making all this chatter. Uh, and I was kind of wondering if the audio is picking it up. It's it's maybe a little bit faint, but it might be picking it up. Alright, so let's do this. Let's try the balloon inflate for this one. Oops. Oh, don't tell me it crashed. Ugh. Balloon inflate can be a not good all the time. Uh, so, if you're using the balloon inflate, be careful if you have a lot of polygons because it can be it can do some weird stuff and you can see right now I'm having this frozen thing going on and I'm not sure why so let me see let me pause the video and okay so ZBrush did indeed crash uh, <laughs> which is <laughs> warning to the wise um, there is uh, the <clears throat> this uh, inflate balloon sometimes does weird things especially if you have a high poly mesh like probably don't even use that if it's really high poly this isn't that high poly but it did crash indeed but zbrush has a really good recovery system and actually i was able to recover this uh <laughs> like exactly where it was which is almost like amazing and that's my alarm going off telling me i need to finish so um, I'm just going to go ahead and smooth this out a little bit and I just, the, the last things I want to do is uh, mess around probably with the legs a little bit more and just the overall form which is really the first thing you should be doing. I'm kind of going willy nilly here because I just kind of having fun and, and moving around this object and just seeing what needed to be done but, but realistically if you're in a production environment you know, you want to you want to like logically move from one step to the next, and that being that the first thing you're going to do is define your whole entire form, uh, make sure that that's right, and then you're going to then you can start getting into the more details like the palms and stuff like that. So um, always uh, always follow that. Um, I would I would say in, in you know 90 percent unless you're just having some fun. Uh, follow that order of operation where you're you're actually um, you know defining the forms first and foremost and getting that right um, and then because you know like uh, I've said in my classes um, you know you don't want to polish a, a you know what you know don't don't if your form if your initial stuff's not right and then you know you move forward you're going to basically be building on top of something that you know that's that's not great in the first place man Duncan looks a bit robust okay we're gonna have to use an inflate brush so hit I on my keyboard inflate brush to get this thing working correctly so you see how this is almost collapsed uh, the other thing you could do actually well that's gonna work a little bit let's see there okay the other thing you could do is mask this area off. Let's use our lasso. Like so, Oop. inverse, there we go. And then you can just inflate it a little bit like here. Um, and then, oh gosh, that smooth is way too strong. Way too strong. Okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sweat this too hard because I know I can fix this later. But I just wanted to show it in here so you knew that if you had some areas that were kind of collapsing in on, it, on themselves, you can use the inflate brush. Alright. Um let's see here. I feel like the arms maybe could be a little bit more robust. Let's see. And I think the elbow looks like it's like a little too low, so I'm just gonna pull the elbow up a little bit, and then I'm gonna smooth this out. Uh, it's so low now, so let's turn this up, smooth that out a little bit. Maybe get my standard brush here and just 
find this arm a little bit better. Let me make sure. Okay, good. My symmetry is still on. <laughs> Since it crashed, sometimes you got you know got to make sure all your stuff's set up the right way. Um, it's a little bit too precise. Let's change the intensity down. Oh, and it's so you can see it turned my lazy mouse back on. Smooth that. Nah, I don't like what I did there. I just want a really, just want to kind of increase it a little bit. So, looks like he would have a trans tri uh, triceps. I was about to say trapezius muscle, but that that's in a whole different area. Triceps. So, let's build the shoulder up a little bit. I'm gonna actually use the move. Just gonna use that alt button and bulge it up a little bit like that. No. Nah. Starts making them look kind of, you know, stronger, a little bit more beefy. You start, you know, adding some of these, these things in there. You know, you could go in here and, and um, just grab the damn standard and you can just you know, give a little bit of a crease there and then smooth it out. Something like that. I really have to work on this, um, on this area here. And probably this area here. Let's see here. I think Duncan's looking a little bit too heavy set for me. I do want him to have kind of a peanut shape, um, but uh, not too much. Not that it looks like it would impede his movement. So. Overall, I mean, you can get in here and just kind of change that. Change that. I think the chest still looks a little funny. Just smooth that down a little bit in the middle there. Maybe bulge that out a little bit. And then smooth it together. And I think these knees probably need to come in just a little bit. They look like they're a little bit offset. Just smoothing, adjusting, oops, trying to get the shape to something that is attractive to me. And that's what a lot of this is, it's just a matter of like working around the object in three dimensions and making sure you like what you see. Now, see this right here? I probably missed a spot in my mask. That's probably how that happened. I'm glad I came over here, though, because this was something I was meaning to fix. So I actually want to smooth that out just a little bit there. Maybe pull it out a little bit. So. Okay, he's getting there. I think these palms are a little bit too pronounced. So I'm going to just kind of leave them as a hint. So just smoothing them out a little bit. Kind of hint at them versus having like a very abrupt 
uh, area. I kind of lost my definition there. So let me just let me use my damn standard. I'll just kind of define that a little bit. And then from here, you just always want to move around in different angles so you can see um, what your profiles are looking like. It's all about the profile. Most of it is, at least. Just making a hint of the of the underlying skeletal muscular system that's going on. And it's pretty decent. I still feel like the hips can use a little bit of work and maybe um maybe this back area. But for right now I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna call it um, for this demo. And uh, and we'll move on to the next step. So, all right, that's just some minor sculpting in ZBrush, and hope you have fun working in it. I find it to be a very enjoyable thing to do. Um, it takes a little bit to get used to, but once you do, it's it's actually I, I I look forward to getting in here and playing around. All right, thanks for watching.